absolute return is another parameter that you can use to gauge the returns from any asset. So it's a point-to-point -point return that tells you the rate at which your asset has either appreciated or depreciated. Yeah, I think Sumira, it is actually a very popular method most investors end up using to see what they made in a specific asset or a security. Absolute return, as the name suggests, is an absolute number, which is a differential between what you made during that period in a specific asset class. It does not have a comparison like a relative return where you're comparing yourselves vis-a-vis -vis a benchmark the fund manager would have chosen or in certain cases to find out the real return you try and subtract it from the inflation number so absolute return is just an absolute number as the name suggests that's true actually Feroz you know for example if you had invested thousand rupees on day one and three years later it yielded you 1500 so you've made 500 rupees and in absolute returns that means you've made a return of 50 percent now here it doesn't matter whether it's taken you three years or even 10 years after 10 years also your absolute return on 1500 rupees would be 50 percent here you're not bothered about the annualized returns which of course over 10 years would be far lesser than they would be over three years and a corollary of this could actually be that people who are investing for less than a year should use only absolute returns because here the annualized returns could be deceptive. Yes, Sumera, absolute returns and also annualized returns sometimes could be deceptive. It's very important to understand which one to use when. For example, if I told you about a friend of mine who invested 20 lakhs in Mumbai buying an apartment, after 20 years it became a value of 1 crore rupees. So obviously he was very excited because the absolute return was 400%, 20 becoming a crore. Mm -hmm. When we sat down and calculated the annualized return for that absolute return of 400%, it turned out to be that it was just a mere 8.5% number. And we went on to check what was the government securities interest back then and that was significantly greater than 8.5%. After this exercise, his love for that property fell dramatically. And in India, where we love our real estate, who hasn't been through exactly this conundrum, right? So now we know that returns can be of three types, absolute, annualized, and relative. And what can actually help you make your decisions better is if you know which category or which situation to actually use what kind of return in. But do remember that returns, whatever kind they may be of, are dependent on the market. Just like a channel has different genres to keep their audience glued on, a diversified equity fund invests in stocks of different companies of different sectors to bring down the risk and maybe create a balance as well.